So that, that gives us a sense of filter. Is it a fair way to reframe it then that in order to do this kind of work, you would have to have a significant amount of expertise, time, individuals to be able to do the work that we're talking about today? Yeah, I, th I think if you're just, I, I think there's, and there's a good reason why a lot of people don't do direct investing is because there is a negative selection bias, right? If you're just sitting there waiting to like pick up the phone and, and, uh, and for whatever reason, you're invested in you know, a big private equity firm, and they call you up, hey, we have a co-investment in this. Like, chances are they've called a bunch of strategic partners, other people who could like, actually add value to the deal outside of just capital. By the time they're calling me, they're at the... You're probably... you got to be yep. humble and say, like, we're probably not the first call. Yep. Yeah, I'm just laughing. There's a buddy of mine in Texas who said, if you ever see an oil deal come out of Texas, just know I passed on it twice. <laughs> yes, we, think about, we think about that a lot, right? Yes, um, yeah. And, and, and I, I, would just, I would echo, we, we always think about it, who does the work? That's a question we ask around our office a lot is who does the work. Hmm. And uh, I would just say that to family offices, I mean, we've seen uh, a lot of family offices lose a lot of money very quickly uh, in our area of the market, right? So call it, you know, sub $20 million EBITDA businesses. Um, it is a highly inefficient market. And when you think about market efficiency, this is, I mean, I remember the, the first time I heard about this, maybe it's been from Mobison, actually. And he said that the, the definition of efficiency or inefficiency is can you intentionally lose money or not? Right? And you look at the public markets, can you intentionally lose money by investing in the public markets? It's, it's more difficult, right? I mean, my argument would be you buy, you know, you say, I'm just trying to, like, you know, go short some, some stock and it might go up a lot, you know, or it might go down a lot, you know, you might, you might win, right? Um, in our area of the market, you can very easily lose your money very quickly and you can do it very intentionally if you wanted to, right? So it means skill really matters and it matters a lot and you're going to have to pay expensive tuition. Somebody paid expensive tuition to learn. Um, what I would say is we, I mean, so the story that we didn't really talk about is not like I, we busted on the scene and raised a bunch of money and we're going to, to try to do this. Like our, our history was we basically did it for a decade with our own capital that we compounded, right? From that SBA loan, paid it back, started compounding capital and took it very, very, very slowly over a long period of time to build our systems, to build judgment and expertise. You know, we're in the same boat of, because I mean, we're doing direct investments, obviously, as the GP. Um, we're looking at, you know, a couple thousand deals a year to get to two to five a year, hopefully, that we get really, really serious and close. So, I mean, the numbers are very similar in terms of, you know, one out of a thousand, you know, maybe two or three out of a thousand if we're really, uh, you know, striking it, striking it well. Um, and I would just say is, you know, we had a family office the other day that came to us and, and uh, we were talking to one of their investment directors and they had lost $100 million uh, out of $140 million that they had invested over about a five-year period. Mm -hmm. And I said, how in the world do you lose that much money? He said, well, you make 10 bad investments. You know, and it's like, it's, it's funny as that sounds. I mean, somebody's got to do the work. So somebody's got to not only evaluate the business, but these businesses don't run themselves post-close. Mm -hmm. Like somebody's got to do the work. And so I think what Scott was saying was, yeah, you can make the investment, but you know, you're eight years in. Like, who's 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 replacing leadership in the firm? Who's watching over incentive compensation? Who's setting the you know setting the tone, the culture? Um, so you know, the starting line for us is, is feels like more of the finishing line, which is the you know consummation of the transaction. That's for us. We're just the hard work at the ends. Hmm. Now you got to really take care of the firm, be a good steward of it. And so if you're not prepared to do all those things, you know, we think about it as how do you source? Again, are you just waiting for the phone to ring? Doesn't happen, right? At least it's not going to happen on, on good stuff. So you got to go out and you know make stuff happen. You got to find stuff. You got to negotiate it. You got to diligence it. You got to document it well, and then you got to operate it post close. Those are each like sort of five unique skill sets, and it's very difficult to have one person. I mean, we call it kind of the private equity firm in a box person. Very rare that person's usually later in their career have done everything and still have the fire to do it. That's a very rare person to bring on, and you're going to need a big team to do it. I mean, to buy call it two to five businesses a year, I mean, we have a team of 16 people. I mean, that's, that's, that's what it requires. So if you want to build as a family office that function, I mean, plan on spending a lot of money, plan on spending a lot of tuition and bad mistakes, you just have to grind through it and be committed to it long term.